Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, my name is Aiden Feldman, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, search for static sites. Come on, this is just working. <laughs> Technology. Technology. Who uses this stuff? Okay, here we go. All right, so uh, yeah, like I said, my name is Aiden Feldman and I work for a, an organization called 18F. So 18F is a team within the federal government. We are essentially trying to modernize technology in federal agencies. So we work like an internal consultant uh, where we you know, partner with different, different groups like Department of Education or the Federal Election Commission, et cetera and try and build better experiences for them, also do trainings on Agile, also offer things like uh, shared, shared infrastructure uh, for people to use, also do some work on policy and acquisition and things like that. Um, but something that we use a ton of are static sites because we produce a lot of documentation. We're, we're really big about working in the open and really the, you know, there's always so many parts of government we can work with, just a drop in the bucket. So the more we can produce documentation that other people can use, the better. And what better way to do that than static sites? So um, I do want to say uh, that these sli these slides, uh, like all works created by ETNF, are in the public domain. Um, I'll show a link to them at the end. So don't worry about like scribbling down notes uh, or anything of links. So I'm going to use this as an example uh, throughout. The presentation. Uh, this is a site that I work on called Before You Ship. So the content is not really that important uh, for the purposes of this presentation, but essentially it lets you know all of the technical and sort of regulatory things you have to go through to launch a site publicly in uh, 18F. So yeah, it is not a huge site, but there's a you know fair amount of content in there, and you know it's uh, it's something that developers at ATF have to reference often. So in this talk, I'm going to talk through a few different options for adding search, you know, because with a site like this, you can see these different sections broken down on the left, and there's subpages and whatever, um, you know, while we're continually working to improve the uh, kind of navigational hierarchy and the way you're running through the content, often you're going to say, OK, I need to learn about this thing and search for it, right? What insight search is very important for this reason. So you can see we have a search box uh, up on the right. I'm going to talk to you about the different sort of options of how to get that on a site that is 100% uh, static. So the first thing I'll mention is uh, search as a service. Uh, then we'll talk about doing client side indexing, and then we'll talk about static. I had that slide twice. Okay. So um, when you're thinking about these different options, there are a handful of kind of dimensions to consider. Uh, the first is control. So control can come in a lot of different forms. Um, one is that is your content controlled in the sense that is it publicly accessible? Could Google crawl it, for example? Or do you need some special solution that can reach within or live within your intranet, right? We have a big advantage of uh, when you work in the open, a lot of these tools just work because your, your content is public, publicly accessible, it can read from your GitHub repositories, et cetera. Um, so where the content lives and where the content is accessible is a big consideration when looking at different options. Uh, other aspects of control are things like the look and feel. You know, How do you want the search box or the results page uh, to look? Do you want type ahead? How do you want it styled, et cetera? Um, you might want control of the indexing. You know, I want this, these parts of certain pages uh, with this section of the page given higher weight than this section, uh, et cetera. Exclude you know, the, the sidebar with related links or whatever it is. Um, basically, you can have yeah, full control over you know, the things that populate your search results. So um, another aspect is moving parts. How much do you care about managing some infrastructure? You know, I think a lot of the benefit of static sites is that you don't have to worry about it crashing. And 
especially if you're dealing with a lot of traffic, you know, as, as was mentioned in a couple of the examples uh, from Bud. So, you know, do you want to manage your own search infrastructure? Right? That's a that then becomes a big thing. You have to monitor and, and keep available, etc. Uh, and then, you know, the last is a reliance on a third party. You know, do you care about branding from some external search provider? Do you care about, you know, if 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 they go down, uh, that you know your search no longer works? Do you care that they might start charging or change their terms of service, and all of a sudden you're in sort of lots of that or anything? Um, in a lot of cases, yeah, that's fine. Like, I'll just use the free thing, use their branding, but it's very little effort. So, all these dimensions, you know, you'll see throughout the throughout the, the different options how these different dimensions come into play and where the trade-offs are. And by the way, feel free to stop stop me with questions. Are there any so far? All right, cool. How many people have done any adding of search to a static site? Okay. A we, few. Were, we were considering it. We were thinking of going to start a site, and some of those were like, how do we do that? Right. Do some research. Great. Yeah, so it's not immediately obvious, right? Um, so yeah, so the first, the first uh, sort of strategy of adding search is search as a service. So what this essentially means is you're using an external provider to handle all of your search for you. And at most, you're embedding a widget of theirs on your page. Uh, uh, in your site, I mean. So, a lot of these search as a service services uh, allow you know the indexing and the results to be fine tuned, especially if you're paying for them, um, and they can be very performant, right? They have search infrastructure that they're sharing amongst a lot of sites, so they can be distributed, you know, globally, and so therefore fast in different regions. Um, they can have high availability, you know, they have support, etc. Uh, there's a lot of advantages to just handing off that work to someone else to do. So I want to show you um, the sort of easiest way of adding search as a service to your site. So there's a link to a code pen here. I'm going to move this. Like, let's see. All right. So. There's this uh, service called Google uh, <laughs> that is really good at search, and uh, or you know they, they've been working on it for a while. And um, in your static site, you can actually leverage an external search provider like Google without even having any special integration with them. In the sense that you don't have to register, you don't have to tell them, uh, you know, when your site gets updated or whatever. All you do is include a search box or a form on your site with a, with an input. Uh, and I apologize about the dark contrast, that kind of sucks. But um, but anyway, with a little bit of jQuery here, I'm saying, you know, when the search form is submitted, grab the input text from, uh, from the input element. I'm going to construct a URL that is google.com slash search, and then pass in a query string of whatever the value is from this input prepended with site colon and then whatever your site is. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've ever tried this on Google. Magnificent. But <laughs> if I go to site colon hnf.gsa.gov and I search Aiden Feldman, it's now going to limit the results to only that host. And actually it even works with uh, like subdirectories, so like paths. So here with, you know, I, I wrote it pretty verbosely, but with just a few lines of JavaScript, you now all of a sudden have search for your site. Again, this only works for public sites. Um, and note, actually, it does work also with other search engines. I tested it with Bing, DuckDuckGo, and uh, Yahoo. So all the major search providers allow you to filter by site colon, you know, some URL. And uh, it works really nicely. The downside is that users are then leaving your site to see those search results. So I'll just show you an example. Uh, the search box down on the left, if I search you know, cats on press enter, hmm. I get the search results, and these are all from CodePen, because uh, that's where that um, 
example code is hosted, but you know it has the Google branding and there's no there's no trace of my site or, or my or my branding block. So that's a trade-off, but it is super simple and it works. This may be something you're about to tell us, but yeah. do any of the major search engines have APIs where you can receive the results back as JSON, for example, and then keep So coming? yeah. Um, not, so not exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's see so it, 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 it turns out that search engines are a little like sensitive about like letting you like Re replicate their <laughs> one thing. <laughs> um, so like Yahoo did have that functionality, and they, and they recently um, deprecated that. But that's a good transition um, to various hosted plans, which actually integrate into your site as opposed to just redirecting somewhere else. So uh, one is Agolia, uh, and they have um, they have a free plan, you know, up to a certain number of searches and up to a certain number of pages, uh, or pieces of content is the way that they, they talk about it. Um, they also have paid plans for higher levels. Uh, Google Custom Search, uh, which I'll talk about in a second, um, and then Yahoo Partner Ads. Both of these, you know, use the use those search engines and provide, uh, I believe, you know, the same results, but on your site, the caveat being, um, well, it's, it is, they are very easy to set up. So for example, this is the form from uh, Google's custom search engine. So you just give it a URL, you give it a name, and basically that's it. And you then get some, some JavaScript to embed in your site, and you get a search bar. <coughs> So um, it does give you some control over styling. You can change like the outline color and the the, the button color and the uh, you know I think the font of the results and, and things like that. It's not a ton, right? And you still have branding. Yahoo's uh, is the same way. I believe. So the downside is you get what you pay for, right? <laughs> you can see like. My results are down here below the giant wall of ads. So, again, depending on how much you, you know, if you just want search on your site, this works and costs zero dollars and it takes no time to set up. Um, but you know, it, it's not, it's not an integrated. It doesn't feel integrated. Is Sorry. this using Google's main index or is it the site search uh, index? Say, say one more time. Is this using the Google's index, or is it using your own index? This no, no, this is totally Google. Google. This is not Google. Yeah, it literally is this, grab like, you know, a JavaScript snippet, put it on your page, and then that's it. Basically, you're embedding Google in your website. You're embedding Google in your website, exactly. And I think um, that Agolia, yeah. I, I, I guess they have a free level, but, but when you go from free to the paid, it gives you like, a huge leap, right? It's very expensive. Yes. Yeah. So the hosted services are not cheap, and maybe I. Yeah. So there are not free options. So Agolia uh, is one of them, and um, you know it gives you like very high levels of control and very high levels of uh, you know search volume and things like that. Um, Google Site Search is is you know they're more business focused uh, offering. Nextopia, which is e-commerce focused, and Swift type. Maybe others, um, but yeah, these all all do essentially the same thing. Of now, you get like real uh, fine grained control, and you get SD, you get API access to APIs and things like that, analytics, you know, all that stuff. And these are basically keyword search. This is not faceted search. No, no, no Agoli, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Please, but I think Agolia and Swiftside both have faceted search and. Like really sophisticated stuff. Yeah, if you yeah, I mean, if you're willing to pay for it, you can get really, really intense things here. Um, and again, this is using like a custom provider. You could build it yourself, which I'm going to talk about. But um, yeah, th this is something where it can just work off the shelf. But you can get really, you know, if you're willing to pay, you can get really detailed and really, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of control over what, what you want to do. You know, things like previews of the of the items, recommendation based on you know similar search results and, and things like that. And what does e-commerce focus mean in the next obvious case? I, uh, unclear. Uh, it's probably just marketing, to be quite honest. But um, 
Yeah, I don't know. It like shows, you know, ratings and things and yeah, lines. Yeah, and facets on the left. Yeah, well. yeah. Uh, right. So anyway, these, these are all worth worth exploring. Um, I have not really used any of them. I didn't follow that. Sorry. What did you say? It has ratings. So you know, it allows you to. It allows like additional content to be like embedded in the results uh, listings. So you know, it can show ratings or it can show like the images. I think it was in Typehead, actually. Sorry. I think what you had was Typehead, not results, was it? No. Well, so yeah. yeah the so screenshot that links. Sorry, yeah. Down. I think the screen. Was it actually the? Yeah, I think that's the type of head. It's not actually results with extra smarts in it. Right. So yeah, there's there's type ahead there, and you know it gives you presumably gives you this results page, gives you the faceted search, you know, filtered by whatever. This is the first search. It's not just the at least the well, no, it looks no, like no, it's got type heads up here. Yeah, the type of head, but also below type head it says product matches, so it probably has some intelligence for so yeah. bringing images. Yeah, there's there's a lot these can do okay. if you're willing. So, so if you want to copy Amazon, that's it. Yeah, exactly. So right, this is this is meant to give you something <laughs> like you know an Amazon kind of feel. And when you say ratings, I guess that would be the the stars. On yeah, the, the stars, and you know, I'm sure it can filter, you know, do sorting by by uh, you know, waiting. And by so. the way, these show the product's photos. Yeah, <laughs> photos are really interesting. Google yeah. doesn't. Right. So anyway, a lot a lot to be done with these custom uh, things. And because they give you access to APIs, you can pretty much build whatever you want. Somebody used the term, a term I haven't heard before. What is faceted search? Faceted filtering. Oh. It means filtering. And now we use search on that thing, so. Yeah. So we'll, we'll yeah. I want to search for shoes, but I want them to be under $200, and I want them to be red, and I want them to be. Under $100, please. <laughs> Sorry, every time I jump out of my uh, presentation, I kind of lose it. Okay. So anyway, lots that you can do uh, with these not free options, especially. Okay. So, in terms of actually getting the search results available. If you're using one of um, one of these providers, you'll often have uh, well, like, what I'm calling like a triggered index. So what this means is, on build, you you tell the search provider, "I want my site to be re-indexed," or even more specifically, add these new pages or or you know update the index with um, with this new content, etc. So you know, if you have very large sites, you might not want to send your entire site to them, right? And you might want to have your results. Uh, you know, you might not want to wait for them to crawl your entire site. You can say, you know, change this page, change this page, change this page. Um, so uh, you know, you have your site hosted on some server, but then the search index here, as part of your build process, you're you're sort of giving them the new content. Either all the content or, or the, new, the new stuff. So, um, so the search option can, you know, the search engine can be one of those hosted options, or it can be self-hosted. We'll talk more about that in a second. But uh, the downside here is that your deployment gets a little more complex, right? Because you now not only have to build your site and put it on your hosting, you also have to, you know, send it to this additional provider, which, you know. Okay, is it, if it's available, or what if it's not available, et cetera? Um, do you want that to block your block your deployment of your site, et cetera? Um, you know, if you have a large site, okay, now how do you you don't want to send the the entire contents? Maybe you just want to send the updated. Well, now you have to do comparisons and things like that. So you now have to do a little bit more engineering. So. Uh, an alternate approach, which is a little bit simpler, is just to let it crawl your site. Um, so, you know, periodically the search in the index will be refreshed with any new information. This is what Google does, right? Um, by default, you can trigger you can trigger Google, but instead of like sending the content directly to them, you just say, you know, I'll I'll just wait for you to recrawl it, and 
now all of a sudden the build process and the plugin process is back to you know being being super straightforward. Um, yeah, so so now it becomes totally independent from from the build and deploy. The downside is that your results can be stale. So if you you know care about your search results being 15 minutes, an hour, a day, out of date, uh, then this might not work for you. Any questions about that? Yeah, I actually have a question on the previous yeah. slide. Can you go back? So, uh, obviously here, when you're sending data to the index, you don't have to send your HTML. You can actually have send structured data or at least sure. uh, straight down so search engines don't need to guess what is content or yep. navigation, right? Yep. And then another one, uh, well, you don't have that option because they can't, right? Sure, and I mean the, the um, you know, I, th I think maybe some of the, the fancier options might have ways to say, you know, look for these classes on the page and that'll be higher ranked or whatever, or, you know, filter out these parts of the page, that kind of thing. But yeah, here you definitely have, because you, you are explicitly injecting content in the index, yes, you can, you can structure it in a way and, and um, yeah, give weights to different things, et cetera, uh, that you couldn't do if it were just crawled. So absolutely, this gives you the most, the most control. So again, the control versus complexity uh, trade-off. Other questions? Okay, so we talked about using hosted options, but really you could do either of those things self-hosted, right? You could stand up something like Lucene or Elasticsearch uh, or even Postgres and you know either either have um, your build process, you know, inject the content into the database and then make a publicly accessible endpoint to retrieve the results. Um, or you could build a cron job, you know, you could have a cron job that requests all the pages on your site, puts it into the, you know, up updates your, your database and then the results are refreshed. So, Using, using this sort of strategy doesn't necessarily mean you have to rely on an external vendor. Again, it just means more moving parts. So um, for government, you know, something that's really important to us is not, uh, you know, is being able to use a non-proprietary option where we're not gonna have, you know, tracking cookies from, uh, you know, from Google or some, or some other provider uh, and where we're not gonna have any vendor login, right, where we can, control all the content ourselves and not have to you know, worry about like, oh, well, we've invested a lot in this vendor, so we have to keep paying them, right? Which is a huge problem in government. Do you uh, have an open source policy? Uh, sort of. So everything that we build uh, is open source. Uh, we use software as a service that is not open source. We tend to favor ones that are, or ones that you know, um, are, are portable. Know, where uh, it's easy to put the data out, etc. Because I know Wikipedia, for example, has a very strict open source policy. Yeah. Start, yeah. And yeah, you couldn't get anything that is not open source or service in the. So or you right. Okay. Yeah. 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 You could. I mean, they they only exported to GitHub after they had their own system going right. and all that. So it's, yeah. It's like, no, we're more. Um, you know, the, the the government does definitely have a. You know, there's a lot of being able to, to offload work, right, onto private sector is a really great thing, right? Good, good for the economy, good for, you know, not wasting taxpayer money, et cetera. Um, so it's a balancing act. No, we're not as strict as, as Wikipedia in terms of usage uh, of we'll use proprietary systems, you know, with the consideration that we can get our data out easily, that they have a good privacy policy. Your yeah, cloud service is based on the AWS, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're using AWS, for example. Um, yeah, and, and, and many other things, and Slack and you know, stuff like that. So uh, we have actually built something. Um, you know, when I talked about the, the crawling, you know, sort of happening automatically, we we built a system called Beckley. I'm not super familiar with it, but it is essentially a uh, Node.js server, I think, on top of uh, Elasticsearch. And that you you know give it what URLs or what sites you want to 
support and then or you know uh, to crawl really and then it does it does that crawling for you I think you can even like trigger it and then you know provide search endpoints. so uh, that's something you might want to check out if you're interested in running this yourself <coughs> so um, yeah, as I mentioned, any of these options, uh, especially the self hosted, are going to take away from some of the operational benefits of static sites because you have moving parts. Uh, you know, when you're when you're using something self hosted, you also have to, or even using an API, you also have to implement the client side logic yourself, right? So now you have you know, some more sophisticated JavaScript on your page, uh, and then you have to worry about you know cross browser compatibility and, and performance. So a lot of considerations there. So client-side indexing. Uh, this is a not very like popular technique, and I'll, you'll see why. Um, but there is there is one plugin that makes search really easy, where you don't have to rely on complicating your build process or an external vendor. Um, and one uh, plugin that allows you to do this is called a Tipu, T I P U E Tip Tipu. Um, so TipU has something called live mode. And what it's actually doing is after your site is deployed and it's, and it's loaded by you know, the pages brought up by the user, what it's doing is then making an AJAX request to fetch the HTML of all the other pages on the site. So it's essentially crawling your site with JavaScript on the browser, on the, on the client side. And then it's building up an index in memory, and so when you search, it you know, pulls the results from there. So, yeah, it's got some downsides. Uh, well, yeah, the, the nice thing is that you know your build process is super simple. You don't have to worry about any external service, um, but there are some performance penalties. So. Um, <coughs> With this plugin in particular, uh, I actually found a, you might argue, is a bug um, where it's requesting all the pages in serial. So you see like the timeline moving further along there. Uh, I think that could be done in parallel, so like that would be a, an enormous difference. But oh, they didn't want to overload the server. Sorry, say that again? They didn't want to overload the server. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it's, not uh, server. it's not really the server, it's actually the network bandwidth that's offering it. Yeah. Yeah, so um, so yeah, what this is doing is it's making an AJAX request for each page. It's actually injecting that HTML into your DOM. Uh, it extracts the content, tokenizes, and tokenized, by the way, means like split up into words. Uh, indexes it, you know, you know, like ranking based on you know, prevalence of words, et cetera. Uh, and then does a little searching client side. Um, in the, in the user's browser. How does it know which page? Uh, I think you give it a configuration file uh, of like the list of URLs. So you could build that you know, by hand or statically or whatever. So this might work for very small sites. Um, and you just add some JavaScript and it works great. You don't have to like, you can use it with any any stack site builder, et cetera. Um, you know, without that fix for the going in serial, uh, I, wouldn't really recommend it. So it took, for this site with 13 pages, it took uh, almost five seconds uh, to load the results. Well, so you don't, you don't go and just start searching. You, you read something and then you start searching. Yeah, so I think that's the other thing. It's only it's only pulling the pages so when you, you, when you, you hit search, yeah. So you, right, you, could, you could optimize. Yeah, you could optimize and prefetch or something. That, that I mean, that's that what I was going to say. I mean, it also prefetches the whole site, so it's actually improving performance of your site. Sure, yeah. So, I mean, you, you, can, do creative, cache, you yeah. can do creative things there, too, around, like, uh, you know, uh, yeah, single okay. page navigation. Uh, yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. Um, yeah, so even if we're in parallel, even if we're prefetched, it's still a lot of network requests. So, if you're on a bad network uh, and, like, a mobile phone, it's probably not going to be. So wouldn't really recommend this for anything that's more than a, a few pages worth of uh, site. Okay, so um, a sort of iteration on this approach. 
is what if instead of having to fetch each page separately, which makes a ton of network requests, what if we essentially provided the content of your site as a big downloadable file, right? So you're doing an AJAX request to get the content, uh, which is all now part of your build process. You concatenate the pages here and provide that on your server as well. Uh, and then you know, that's requested uh, from the browser and again, the indexing, tokenizing, et cetera, all happens on the client, but it's now just one request. And um, you can do things like strip the HTML and you know, just, just send the parts of the pages you care about. Um, so relative to, you know, relative to the, the previous approach, this can, this can be more performant. Uh, and especially with things like, like gzipping, you know, it, for, for not an enormous site, it could be not a bad uh, option. So we actually created a uh, plugin to a Jekyll plugin to try this out at ETF. Um, so the Jekyll Pages API takes, uh, as part of your build, it generates a large JSON file with, uh, you can't really see it here, but um, it provides like the title, the URL, the tags, and then the body, just as a, a big blob of text for every single page on the site. And so with Ajax, you just fetch those results and you use a client-side library like Lunar.js, and I'm really sorry about the contrast. Um, so Lunar.js allows you, it's a JavaScript library that allows you to do the indexing and tokenizing and whatever. Uh, if you don't know what the, those words mean, don't worry about it. Basically, you add a little bit of JavaScript and it can search, you know, you can tell it like, here's one page, here's another page, and here's how I want it indexed, and here's how I want those different fields ranked, and you can build a search on top of that. So maybe you'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, why is indexing done in the browser again? Uh, if you already have a plugin to manipulate your pick of code, why? I'm glad you asked. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so. Um, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, so as long as you're concatenating all those pages, why not just do the indexing? And the cool thing is, Lunar.js actually has the ability, well, it does store the index as a, a JavaScript object or array or whatever. So um, you can actually export that and save that as a big JSON file, which you then which you then request. So this is actually um, what we use heavily at ATM. So now, instead of creating uh, any index client side, we're now building the index here as a static file. So, you know, instead of it being the full page content, it's actually the tokenized and uh, and indexed result. You know, result. So it's basically going to say like, you know, Apple is going to be one of the entries, and then it's going to have a list of pages, and you know butterfly and whatever. So every search term has an entry in there. The downside here and the reason that there's a bit of a trade-off is that this is much larger than the original content, right? Because every single word is now going to be present with all the links that it uh, that it appears in. So it can, so it can be one file with all of the results? Yeah. As opposed to multiple files. Yeah. So right. So you could do something more creative like you know, build a separate file for every search term or something like that, but then the number of files explodes. So there's there's a lot of ways that you could kind of do this. So this was just a very simple. It has like exclusion words and things like that. Yeah, so stop, stop words uh, are a term in search that means to, to strip out things like a and the and sure. so, mm -hmm. et cetera. But it's just a single word index, right? Uh, I think you have control over that. I don't, I don't remember what the defaults are. And you can uh, use Lunar for that. So. Yeah, yeah. So what, what we're doing is using Lunar on, as part of the build process that when you go through and generate all your pages, Lunar is also on the server through Node running through all those pages with the raw content and the structured uh, metadata and generating that index, exporting it as a file, and then but it's a, so it's a separate process from your build for your public site. Uh, yeah, so we make like a wrapper command, mm -hmm. like, or I, th or I think 
uh, the Jekyll plugin maybe like so shells out to nodes or something. It must be, but you've got it as a build dependency, not as a parallel process. Or yeah, uh, that's the way we did it. I think you could very easily make it a separate thing if you if you wanted it to build separately. Is there any way to assign weights to your pages as part of this process? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, so Lunar you can't really see here, but uh, you add you add entries to the index, and you know these are structured as objects. Um, and here, when you say I want to create an index, this field is going to be boosted by you know ten points, right? So okay, my title is going to be boosted here. There might also be a way to say you know value this page over the other one. Uh, I'm I'm not sure, but Lunar is a pretty Sophisticated library and so has, like has a lot of tags and tags as well. I guess. Yep, yep. And so you can do things like you know, Give include the these words, ex exclude these words, uh, etc. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things that Linux can do. So um, yeah, why not do the index on on, on the server side? Well, the uh, the next file might be longer than than your original content, um, and so your network overhead is going to potentially be larger. But again, uh, when it's gzipped and cached, it's maybe not going to be so bad. So for that, you know, the sort of reference site before you ship that I showed you at the beginning, it has probably on the order of like 30 pages, 35 pages, something like that. Um, the the gzipped index is 44k. For reference, jQuery minified is almost 40k. So like, it's not it's not a huge deal. Um, and you fetch it once, and the other amazing thing about it is that because you're not making network requests, when you search, you get your type ahead results instantly. You get your So you don't make a network request because you're actually bringing in the asset at the page so uh, I think maybe we loaded it asynchronously. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, okay. yeah. yeah, you're loading it. Um, yeah. Exactly. But so you don't have to worry about breaking it down, or you don't have to worry about like just bringing me a, a word-only index to speed up type ahead. You basically it's 40k, yeah. so it's the entire content. It's everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I understand correctly, you're That's using Lunar.js yeah, server yeah. side to build the index, and then we also Lunar.js client yeah. side to search the index. Correct. Yes. But on this side, so this is just an AJAX file. Yeah. So um, yeah. So. Uh, when, when this page gets loaded, it makes a request for the search index.json, and then that gets fed into Lunar.js on the client side, and the search box, you know, when you, when you type, it goes to slash search you know, with the query parameter. When it sees that query parameter, it replaces all the content in the page right. with, um, you know, with the results from so, so how big, so I, I've been doing something similar um, with Lunar, and it's not a huge site, but it's a little bit slower than that. But I'm not actually using an Ajax file right now, I'm using I'm just loading it as an object right now. Yeah. But um, it's interesting, and I wonder how, what, at what point in the size of a site would you say, don't do this? I don't know. Depend, like, do you have are all of your users in rural Africa? Like, probably don't do it at all. You know, but if uh, um, you know if all of your users have like good internet connections, and um, are they going to be searching frequently? Right. Like, this is a site that our developers like come to a decent amount, and so like I don't care if the initial load is a little bit long because they're going to be searching it repeatedly. Most we, we just discussed, sorry, in parallel, uh, another, <laughs> another very good use case is if you package your Cordova site into the mobile app, this can be, because download is not an issue anymore, right? You, right. you package it in within the app, and then can allow search within your app using this tool, which I actually have a project for it. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you know uh, if it supports only English or multi Uh I'm not sure. I mean, it's just tokenized words, so it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, it's probably not smart enough to do multi-word. The, the oh, Lunar.js right. documentation is very good. I'd suggest, I'd suggest taking a look at it. Um, it. It's a very sophisticated library and has, you know, I, mean, I think a plug-in you know, architecture. Is that, you know, how do you remove pluralism and, and gender? Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. the languages issues. Yeah. And it's very pluggable, too. So you can write your own tokenizer and you can write your own 
whatever. So uh, if you needed you know, really heavy customization, you could do that too. Uh, well, if you only care about the names of the pages, you could build a separate index that is just you know, uh, here. Instead of including the body of the page, you just include the title and build that index separately. That would totally be possible. Okay. So yeah, I mean, if you wanted to have multiple indexes and do the splitting or whatever, that would work. But like, um, you know, we say we say okay, our title is going to have higher weight, and so type ahead works the way you expect. So it, it, we've been very happy with it. I have a good data set. I'm sorry. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we'll try it out. Yeah, there's the hair. Um, all right. So everything that I've talked about uh, all work all require client-side JavaScript. If your site needs to work without JavaScript, you're screwed, in the sense that you have to have a server to render the HTML to display on your page, or to, look, to display on your site. And you know, that'll have to be at a different path. So something to consider. Um, but if you're okay with, with at least a little bit of JavaScript, you can have search on your site very effectively. So uh, we talked about uh, search as a service, we talked about client-side indexing, we talked about building a static index and consuming that from the client. Um, I hope you know all this discussion is giving you a little bit better of an understanding of all the different options uh, and that you aren't too overwhelmed. Uh, so thank you very much, and uh, that's a link to the slides on the right. Uh, so yeah, happy to take any other questions. Hey, uh, Mark. Not, <laughs> not at the very moment. Uh, probably in a couple months. This is, this is yeah. I mean, it's just some of the stuff that uh, various companies are doing with the government really make you feel good about wanting to contribute to the government. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. So I wonder. I'm sorry, guys. Well, I just wanted to mention. So a couple of alternatives that I use for static sites is um, more like filtering than searching. Um, so, like a product site, um, where say I, I've done a lot of work for publishers and this running. So, well, I'll build a site, say, full of books or whatever. And what I want to do is give people an opportunity to go to the books page and say, I want this author or I want this type of book or something like that. And so, with List.js, well, actually, that's List.js right there, exactly. Um, so ListJS allows you to either use buttons or a uh, little typing to filter something down to just what you want. And I use that with, you know, search is important, of course, but a lot of times I find in a library type of page that people want to just kind of narrow a set of results down. Than that's the facet the search case for e-commerce. That's like yeah. probably the primary case. Uh, yeah, and I, I mean, this isn't quite as sophisticated as faceted search. I mean, I could use buttons, but they're they're one at a time. Um, that's list.js. Um, but I like you can just let JS do the same thing and oh, right. just have a client side, right? Because yeah. you just populate the index with the content from the divs. Do you do right. your search that you know it creates the index? And you do the search that you. Hide, hide the well, and, and so uh, the reason when, when I use ListJS, I use it because it's using whatever content is on the page, and I give it class names to say, you know, this is what I'm looking for. Um, there's also one, I'm trying to remember, they use for faceted search. Um, God, I can't remember the name of it. It's the same guy who makes masonry and those things, but there's a one that's good for faceted search, too. You know what it is? Yeah, if, all the, if all of the content is on your page, your yeah. life gets a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, with static, so you can load a lot of content on a page because um, your page won't bonk. And if you, you know, compress your HTML and you're smart about your images and that sort of thing, you can just, you know, um, put a lot of content on a page and filter it rather than search. I mean, it's an option not for every use case, of course, but for certain things. And what I tend to use it for is for product pages. Considering that some of the media sites are uh, multiple megabytes per page, cramming multiple megabytes of text into a page is not, not big of a process, yeah. you know, uh, alternative. So let me just throw a complexity. So you're using a static site and you've got products, but what if your site handles comments from an external source? How do you then do search on your comments? 
Are you not doing I don't know. Are you using Discuss or something like that? I mean, uh, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone do a search on comments, but. Well, I'm just saying, like, comments can be just as much content on your website as sure. the website content itself for a very dynamic site. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, a very active site. Because you probably need to use, like, their APIs, no. making those requests at search time probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, so I would. For something like that, I would probably have, uh, you know, do more of a self-hosted or, yeah. well, do a hosted option where you can periodically You can periodically pull your content and pull the content. build your own index even if it's a little stale, but. Yeah, we do need to be another meetup here for comments and social media. Right. Yeah, because you see, that's because that's, a big, that's, that's, that's the, yeah. you know, the biggest thing. Well, it's easier now, but five years ago, again, that was the biggest issue with creating a static site was how do you handle comments and there's mm -hmm. a slew of companies that do it but what if you want to then post your own well but you know a good a good discussion point would be what self-hosting you know solutions can you host to do con to comments so you've got a static site but then you've also got your comments uh, in a separate self-hosting option you're managing it I think the yeah. government will publish that because the kind of comments would be left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we don't deal with comment boxes very often. <laughs> no, but, but yeah, well, again, it's, all, it's all economies of scale and speed and performance. So the larger the site, the better the static response, the more comments, the more eyeballs you're going to get. So, yeah. totally. um, so we got into the weeds in a few different directions. Are there any, like, Basics questions like I, I don't want to exclude anyone who might have like a I don't even know what's going on here kind of. Kind Just of curious, who's yeah. behind Lunar Jazz? Uh, I don't know. Okay, it's open source though, right? Yeah, it, it is. is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Anything else? What did you mean when you said Elasticsearch? So Elasticsearch is a um, an open source search index. So it's it's, it's a database. Essentially. So, uh, but it's optimized for searching. So you, you shove content into it, you tell it how you want to build your various index, you know, your one or more indexes. So like, with this field more, you know, this field should be broken up by, you know, these, kind of, these kinds of words, et cetera. Uh, and then give me back, you know, and then it provides uh, URLs basically where you can request the content out. The content out. So Lunar.js, it, it's, so Lunar.js is actually a play on uh, Solar. Solar is another thing like Elasticsearch. So LunarJS is, is interchangeable uh, for Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is just much more heavy duty. Elasticsearch is like, if you're building Amazon, you would use Elasticsearch. GitHub, GitHub, Solar, GitHub. Is it, is it yeah. Elasticsearch just industry leading ones? Isn't yeah. Elasticsearch just uh, Solar V3? Or is it something it's, it's, an ex yeah, it's an extension of Solar. Yeah. Or, well, well, it's an extension of Lucene, which is an extension of Solar. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like it's it's Solar V3. That's what it's called. It's a database. Got it. Yeah. But it does it does all the indexing and stuff. But for a small site, you chances. could just use a straight old JSON file without the manipulations that Lunar would use, right? Yeah. So back at the Jekyll Pages API yeah. example, right? Of uh, yeah, I you know a, an early version was just. Yeah, sending up that, mm -hmm. sending up that content like this, you could just bypass. Lunar. I mean, you you, you couldn't you, you right. could do it without even using Lunar. You could just say like, which of these has, um, you know, which of the, which of these like, does my search term match the title? Right. Yeah, or contain this arm strike. Right. Like, you, that would be the real. So Lunar's thing. just going to improve your results. Lunar's going to improve your results. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to say like, okay, the, the word, you know, the, the the acronym ATO is mentioned more times on this page, or is in the title, which makes it more, right. you know, which gives it higher weight. It does those kinds of things and strips out, you know, stop words like unimportant words, basically. So yeah, it's, that makes it a little smarter. I don't know how it works with the phrase, like phrase matches. Um, yeah, well, multi-word match. Yeah. yeah, but I mean the whole. Okay, sorry, I'm I like pulling things apart, but I'm just thinking three steps ahead that yeah. if it's if the index is actually broken down um, it, at two layers, by better and then by words itself, then you can do multi-word search. Um, 
Well, it, can, it, is, it would do multi-word search. But it might not do multi-word search. It doesn't index the pairs, right? Like no, it doesn't. Best search indexes pairs and triples. Yes. Uh, you you would get the they, best results like if you do that. Yeah. But the obvious you index is, is, no, is blowing up. Actually, you know what? I don't think it would be that complicated because if you actually, if you take the, the more detailed file, you can then do a subsequent URL well, match. Do you mean, so if it's, if it's say, it's something is mentioned more, no, 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 no. The example is like you put in Apple, uh -huh. okay, you get all the pages of Apple, and you start yeah. typing in watch. Mm -hmm. Now, if the index is broken up, then you can look for A type ahead and W type ahead, mm -hmm. and you can like get watch, but then is the page results Apple watch, or is it the pages that have Apple or watch? Mm -hmm. So the triple, okay. the triple, the, 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 the Basically, it's called improbable, uh, improbable uh, words or, key or com combinations where you would, you would index not just individual words, but you would index two poles or three poles, and uh, the most improbable matches, right, things that are unique to this page uh, for the triple, like Apple Watch, you would never, if, if Apple Watch didn't exist, you would never have Apple and Watch together that, that closely, right, in the past. The moment Google app, uh, Apple released the Apple Watch, right, that combination became very specific, and that keyword is, like, if someone types Apple Watch, you want that particular page, right? Uh, and that's, that's kind of uh, complicated. And you also, in your conversation, inadvertently mentioned proximity. Yes, proximity. I mean, you know, so Apple, blah, 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 work, you know, work, something watch. Is that spam? Anyway, yeah, that, I mean, sorry, we're getting complicated. We're getting into it. So I, think we, I think we should call it and we can, um, <laughs> yeah, if they want us hang out here or whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, just a bit of want to leave. <laughs> don't, 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 don